I was just saying a very warm welcome to anyone joining us from home by video. Welcome to worship. So we have one brief announcement before we begin, and that's February Fun Social Soup and Pudding Evening, February 18th at 7 p.m. in the church hall. There will also be music by Dave Rinaldi's band. It's going to be a great time. Please do sign up if you plan on joining us. There's a sign-up sheet by the door back in the foyer. I'm now going to pass it over to Charmaine Slade, who's leading our service this morning. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Um, it really is lovely to see you and welcome you here. I'd like to echo what Elizabeth has just said. If you are new, then you are so welcome to worship with us today. It's lovely to have you. And if you're not sure of anything at all, just ask one of your neighbours. None of us bite, I don't think. Um, and we should be able to answer any of your questions. And similarly, I'd like to extend my welcome to everyone who's worshiping from home. Oh, by the way, the coffee's pretty good as well. <laughs> God is with us, our Emmanuel. We know that God, Emmanuel, is with us all the time, but to worship each week with our friends and families is such a privilege, such an honour and a blessing. Today we're going to be focusing on the Beatitudes, Actually, just one in particular. The attitudes were and still are a radically bold statement of Jesus' intention to establish the kingdom of heaven on earth right here, right now. Bringing true inner peace and freedom for all who dare to follow him as his disciples. And it's through people like us, his disciples, that his kingdom will bring breath or bring blessings to all the people on earth. The Old Testament prophet Micah in chapter 6 said this, With what shall I come before the Lord and bow down before the exalted God? Shall I come before him with burnt offerings, with calves a year old? Will the Lord be pleased with thousands of rams, with ten thousand rivers of oil? Shall I offer my firstborn for my transgression, the fruit of my body, for the sin of my soul? He has shown you, O mortal, what is good. And what does the Lord require of you? To act justly, and to love mercy, and to walk humbly with your God. Let us pray. Lord, we come before you today knowing that you do not choose us because we are clever or strong or powerful. Rather, you call us to rely on your wisdom, to fight in your strength and to boast that you are always there for us. Help us to walk humbly with you each step of the way before us. And in our worship today, give us fresh insights, and renewed commitment for that journey of faith. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> Let us begin our song worship, our song worship this morning with that classic strength will rise as we wait upon the Lord, followed by the Matt Redman version of Blessed Be Your Name. If you are able to, please can you stand? Thank you.
When Jesus saw the crowds, he went up the mountain. He sat down, and his disciples came to him. He taught them, saying, Blessed are those who realize how much they need God's help, for the kingdom of heaven belongs to them. Blessed are those who are sad because of a death, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the gentle and humble, for they, for they will inherit the heart. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for goodness and justice, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are those who are made to suffer for the sake of, the, of goodness, for the kingdom of heaven belongs to them. Blessed are you when people criticize you and hurt you, and say all kinds of untrue evil things against you, because you are my follower. Rejoice and be glad, for you will have a great reward in heaven. The prophet who spoke for God long ago were badly treated too. Hallelujah. Thanks, Carl. Wherever we go these days, we're led to believe all sorts of things which aren't necessarily true. Like the belief that if your body is perfect, then you'll be completely happy and a winner in life. Or this one, which you hear a lot, if we have a dream, whatever it is, and with effort, we can always make it happen. Well, how daft, daft is that? Because we know that's not true. Or if we work hard to be popular, then how happy will we be? Do you think that's true? No? Yes, no? Well, we're going to watch some of our friends who are going to now come down to the front. And they're going to pretend to be being filmed uh, for a TV competition. Let's see what they've got to say. Number again, 600, 100, 100. Call now or text 1234 to vote for your favourite contestant. A reminder of our contestants. We have the wonderfully successful and beautiful Chantal. Give her a cheer. We have, we have Jo. Don't be too enthusiastic, guys. Joe, he's tried his best for this series, but he's not quite earned enough points to be at the top. Maybe next time he'll leave his problems at the door. <laughs> Better luck next time, Joe. And then we have Amina, the nation's favourite. Her skills are exceptional, and she's won the hearts of thousands. It's up to you, the audience, to vote as to who you think should win this series and the ultimate prize. First of all, let's check in with Chantal. Chantal, how are you feeling? Yes, yes, I'm feeling pretty good, pretty calm. I've done my yoga, had some detox juice. Finding it helpful to repeat to myself, my body is a temple. My body is a temple. My body is a temple. I hope people at home now they can see how important this is to me. I have deserved to be the winner. I really do. Let's <laughs> have a cheer. She could be the winner. Okay, thank you. Next we have Jo. Now Jo, obviously you must be disappointed with how things have turned out for you. Is there anything that you want to say to maybe change the minds of our lovely audience? Well, firstly, I'd just like to say 
Thank you. Thanks for giving me this opportunity, and to everyone at home, I've not been deserving of this opportunity, and I haven't spent any time with my family. I've hurt people's feelings to get here, and I think maybe I'm just really tired and it's starting to show. Well, yeah, to be honest, you don't look that great, Jo. <laughs> Sorry, um, I've just been told in my earpiece that you're one of our poorest performing contestants we've ever had. Oh. How does that make you feel? Oh. Oh, well, pretty pants, to be honest. <laughs> I'm sorry I've let everybody down. When at the start, so many people put their faith in me. And it's, it's been hard, the competition has been hard, and I understand why the other contestants are so frustrated with me too. I see now, I feel like I've been going through the motions to get here. I've not had the time to realise how, how lonely I've been. Aww. Whoa there now, Joe. <laughs> Let's not get all emotional for our lovely audience. They want a happy winner, remember? Happy! We all like positive thinking. We all love positive thinkers, don't we, everybody? Yay! Right, I'm going to move on now to our final contestant, the incredible Amina. Amina, how have you done how have you done enough to clinch the deal and take home the ultimate prize? Yes! Oh, I'm sorry, does that sound cocky? Yeah. <laughs> sorry, sorry. Not sorry, okay? I'm not apologizing for myself, okay? I have worked my whole life for this. This moment. Oh, I'm so excited. I'm so pumped. Thanks, guys. Great confidence, Amina. You are already talking like a winner. Excellent. Right, give her one final cheer. Yes. Okay, so the contestants have done all they can now. They have slogged for weeks, years to some it would seem, hey Joe, to get to this point. And now it's over to you to choose your winner. Will it be Chantal? Beautiful, healthy, an inspiration to us all. And then we have Joe. Does he represent enough for you at home, our nation? He says he's already a winner. I quote, I actually am happy to walk away now. I have everything I need in life. Or will you vote for Amina? Her past successes go before her. She really seems to have everything on her side. Okay, so get ready when you hear who the winner is with your cheers and whoops. The votes are in, and I can confirm we have our winners, ladies and gentlemen. Our nation has voted for... It's... Hang on. Yes. No, no, it is Amina! Yes! yes. <laughs> um, sorry, Joe, I said the winner was Amina. Uh, well, yes, Amina. Um, you have great things to come, laid out for you, wonderful things, I'm happy for you. And, and for you too, Chantel. And, and you. Don't, don't you feel the relief? The relief knowing that this is over? Don't you have to pretend anymore? You can go home now and put on your pyjama chocolate uh, bottoms. Pyjama chocolate, pyjama bottoms, and eat chocolate in bed. But knowing that no one is watching you anymore. You are okay. I am okay. We are all okay. God will never leave us. See you next time. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> oh, fabulous. Thanks, everyone. That was um, very brave of you. <laughs> very brave of you. Well done. Yeah, put your microphone down, Mrs. So, in this world of popularity, of airbrushed perfection, the push to be successful all the time, it is really hard to be yourself. When we try to do what the world tells us to do, just using our own wishes and efforts, then chances are we won't succeed. 
Or we may feel sad and really disappointed and could even blame ourselves thinking that we must have done something wrong along the way. Earlier we heard Tara read the passage from the Gospel of Matthew which says, Blessed are the gentle and humble, for they will inherit the earth. And I think this is what Joe what jo actually found out for himself. He realised that compared to the other competitors, he wasn't the, the obvious worldly winner, but that's when that light came on. Was he miserable? No. Relieved? Yes. He didn't need to pretend to be anyone other than who he really was. He could relax and enjoy his life exactly as he was as God made him to be. No pressure anymore. No wonder he was relieved, yeah? Now for you all the guys here, I realise this is counter-cultural, especially in the perfect world of social media where people have perfected this art called humble brag. God asks us to be gentle and humble. Does this sound weak? Does that make us into wimps? Well, no. Quite the opposite. God always asks us to do the things that he knows will be the best for us. In these days when we are expected to be in a certain or acceptable way, then being gentle and humble is much the stronger and wiser thing to do. Have a think about it. Next time you feel pushed to be someone that you don't think is really you, then maybe have a think about today's drama. Will whatever you're being pressured to do actually really make you happy in the longer term? God made you, you. He made you perfectly. And you are loved just as you are. You are complete and valuable beyond price. Beyond price. Amen. Let's just pray for our people before they leave. Holy and loving God, thank you for the gift of our children and young people who are the lifeblood of our church community. We thank you for Claire and the dedication of everyone who supports her to provide our younger ones with information and uh, entertaining sessions every week. In your precious name, Lord, we pray. Amen. Amen. I'm intending to continue the theme that we were touching on earlier with our younger people, and it's focusing on just one of the Beatitudes. Jesus' request for us to be meek. What do we think when we hear that word, meek? It's not a word that we use very often these days, um, but I do wonder whether we tend to associate it with being weak. The powerful don't get a mention in the Beatitudes. The people who are strong enough to be peacemakers, who hunger and thirst for justice, and who endure persecution certainly do. The word translated as meek suggests not being overly impressed by a sense of one's own importance. Far from being timid and intimidated, being meek is the proactive quality of being gentle, humble, and courteous. This challenges our world view of power dressing, put downs, but it really is the way to inherit the earth. It's very easy to confine the Beatitudes to the past, but actually they are as current as they ever were. They were a revolutionary concept at the time, and I think they still are. They continue to challenge modern thinking and really we should be aiming to aspire and aspiring to do them where we can. Looking through the news, um, we can find scenarios which are not always wholly positive, but in which we can find examples 
of those who would be honoured by God's blessing. I've been looking at an article which was published earlier this week on the BBC News website. It's about Le Mans. Le Mans is a small town in the Donbass region of Ukraine. Four months ago, the Russians, um, they could pardon, the Russian occupiers, they left the town and now people <coughs> seek to live their ordinary lives despite um, the lack of safety from Russian missiles which are nearby. How are they doing that? I'm going to read directly for the moment from this article. And the reporter is um, an Andrew Harding from the BBC. Two Ukrainian fast jets roar low overhead as we emerge from a dense snowbound forest and drive into the railway junction town of Liman in the Donbass region of eastern Ukraine. It is nearly four months since the Russian troops were forced to retreat from here, pushed back some 25 kilometres, which is about 15 miles to the east. But the boom of artillery fire close to the front lines is still audible every few minutes. And this town, much of it in the ruins, is not yet safe from Russian missiles. I live on the seventh floor. The rocket hit the fifth floor early this morning. That's around five. But I'm in farm, says Alexander Rodovich, a 73-year-old retired businessman and the only remaining resident of a large apartment block on the edge of town. He bends over to share some dried food to the eight cats, seven of them strays, abandoned by neighbours, that he now looks after. That resilience and that strong collective spirit seems to be widespread here among those who have clung on amid the snow and rubble. We hear then about a man, and excuse my pronunciation, called Valery Mitrienko, a 45-year-old railway technician. In a nearby courtyard beside a giant bomb crater, he's busy chopping wood to help heat the basement that he and 21 neighbours have been sheltering in for the past nine months. The man still has no running water or central heating, and the daytime temperatures have been hovering around freezing. What can we do? Valerie shrugs, stroking the head of a stray dog he and his wife, Ira, recently adopted and named Princess Diana. When he's not busy with the axe, Valerie helps neighbours repair broken doors and windows in their badly damaged apartment. These people are meek. They are not seeking to destroy or defeat the Russians. They simply don't want to get on with the business of living. As Russia's forces um, approached Le Mans last June, 41,000 civilians fled, leaving about 10,000 people behind. Many of these were elderly, or poor, or had sick relatives whom they refused to leave. For the next four months, about 60 people squeezed into the same cellar on Railway Street. These are people just like us. Working people, healthcare workers, teachers, accountants, shopkeepers whose lives were turned upside down. They had homes, pensions, salaries, and suddenly they were forced to take shelter in apartment block basements, hoping it would be for a short period, but here we are over a year later, and there they still are. And now, throw in a curved ball. They find themselves sharing that same space and very limited resources with people who are pro-Russian. 
who've been actively hoping and saying that Ukraine would lose the war. On the 3rd of October 22, Liman was liber excuse me, liberated by Ukrainian forces, and soon afterwards their town mayor, Alexander Shurga, returned to discover that 80%, maybe 90% of the buildings had been damaged or destroyed. The railway lines that passed through the centre of their town are still a mass of broken overhead cables and blocked tracks. But in recent months, electricity has been restored to most of the town and the surrounding villages. Pensions are now being paid and some of the shops have reopened. Throughout the conflict, government and humanitarian groups have brought in wood stoves and distributed logs. Every day, one aid group brings in hundreds of packed lunches to distribute free of charge. There are roughly 700 children living in the land, and the mayor estimates that another 3,000 residents have returned since that town was liberated. These people have endured and continue to endure unimaginable hardship, trauma and loss. Yet are they beaten? They haven't capitulated or surrendered. They have used that quality of meekness and gentleness to endure unspeakable horrors and are helping others to remain calm, to endure their own suffering. That will filter down to the innocents, the children, and will help to protect their peace of mind right through the trauma. I'm sure that many of these people will be people of faith, and they may well have considered the attitudes in their own situation. It's just a couple. Blessed are the gentle and humble, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for justice, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will receive mercy. Blessed are those who are peacemakers, for they will be called the children of God. Blessed are those who are made to suffer for the sake of goodness, for the kingdom of heaven belongs to them. Blessed are you. When people criticise you and hurt you and say all kinds of untrue evil things against you because you follow me. In the thick of things, when gunfire makes them run for cover, do they pray over these verses? I'm sure many do. They are as relevant today as they ever were. They are timeless, they are wise. Back here in the UK, we're nearly able to say goodbye to January, which can be a tough month. Christmas is over, but the days are still dark and cold. Our political climate is so obviously horrible, and the fallout into our daily lives is obvious to us all, I think. But the January blues, are not what this passage is all about. Yes, it's dark outside. Yes, we're in a time of crisis. Yes, things can feel really hard, emotionally, financially, spiritually, and in January in particular, it can be really doubly hard, I think. All these things can make us feel so angry, sorrowful, maybe even bitter. But Jesus tells us that despite all these things, we are truly blessed. Blessed are the gentle and humble, for they shall inherit the earth. That humility will keep us grounded. Humility will keep us on an even keel, even when every road that we go down is full of potholes. When the chips are down and we're limited as to what we can actually do, then we do our best and then we rest. 
and we rest in God's unfailing promise that we are truly loved. The last verse of the Beatitudes says this, Rejoice and be glad, for you will have a great reward in heaven. The prophets who spoke for God long ago were badly treated too. Which helps to keep things in proportion, don't you think? In the name, the precious name, of Christ we pray. Amen. Great are you, Lord. You give life. You are love. You bring light to the darkness. You give hope. You restore every heart that is broken. Let us stand together if you are able and sing these words from the hymn, You Give Life. Great are you, Lord. Oh,
Let us pray. Lord Jesus, in the quietness of your church here in Haverhill, we come as one body to call upon you as our Saviour. Come into our hearts this day, Lord Jesus, as we ask you for many things that we may be burdened with. We ask that you bless our minister Peter and his loving family as they face the upheaval of moving away from us. We pray that we continue to keep the light in this church that Peter has taught and guided us and we place our faith in you, that you will provide for us as you always have done in the past. We thank you for our station committee as they work together for our family here. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. We bless all those in our church family who are heavily burdened and struggling with sickness and bereavement. May they know your comfort, Lord, as you walk alongside them. We pray for our dear friend Verna, who is in Addenbrooke's Hospital, and for her family as she goes through her treatment. May she know your presence, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for your wisdom and support for those involved in the running of your church and the many venues that take place week by week. This enables us to uplift and comfort each other in times of happiness and worries. Lord, in your mercy. Lord Jesus, we know you fill us with joy and blessings as we go out into the community and help to support Youth for Christ, Reach, St Nicholas Hospice, The Hub, The Dementia Society, The Care Homes in our town, The Charity Shops and the new Salvation Army Link which has just opened up uh, involving the initiative from Churches Together for the good of the community. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. All over the world, we hear of terrible suffering, and we can only imagine the feeling of those whose every waking hour is so dreadful. The continuing war in the Ukraine, where your people this winter are so cold, without heating and electricity, and the terrible loss of people from both sides. It is so appalling, Lord. But we pray for reconciliation and respect of your people to each other. We pray for the uprising of Israel and Palestine again, where already terrible losses have occurred. May the armies have love and strength and respect for each other. And we hope that as they search for peace, they will listen to you, dear Lord. As we come before you, dear Lord, we ask you for so much, but we are comforted that you will do thy will and always walk alongside all humanity. Lord, in thy mercy, hear our prayer. May we now say the Lord's Prayer as Jesus taught us to do. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, in the earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for 
God of justice and mercy, full of compassion, you have gracefully forgiven us, allowing us to start again. We are free through your cross. We are forgiven in you and have new life. Amen. Our final song this morning is Splendour of the King. Let's rise to our feet, join together and worship as one voice. Our God, our true hope and inspiration. Amen. Um. 